there. I want to thank you for joining me for episode number 17 of Midmo Mama. My name is Jenny and I live in Sedalia, Missouri in the United States where I am making in the Midwest. I'm recording this video on Tuesday, November 3rd for upload on Thursday, November 5th. My program is about yarn crafts and food and whatever else I decide I want to talk about. And in today's episode, um, I, I restarted an old project and I made some project progress on a newer project. And let's see, for food, what did I make for food? I made some chili with some cornbread. I used a, a cornbread recipe that I hadn't used before. So I'll tell you a little bit about that. And I also made a chicken and dumpling soup. And I made my uh, tried and true banana bread. As a matter of fact, I used two tried and true recipes. My, my all time favorite chili recipe and my banana bread. So if that sounds like stuff you're interested in, I encourage you to stick around and, and see what we got going on. So, um, I do want to, before I start my show, I just want to reach out and say, Kim Bamford, you still have not reached out to me for my 100 subscribers giveaway. <clears throat> I just wanted to encourage you to um, send me an email. Um, my email is midmomama2 at gmail.com. So uh, send me an email and reach out. You have until November 18th to claim your prize. All right? <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> I didn't mean to cough. So, so good luck to you, Kim. I hope I hope you reach out to me. Um, otherwise, I'm just gonna have to to give it away again. So, so without further ado, let's move on to the next segment. So now it's time for Mama Crafts, and I was telling you in my intro, let me get my Huga shawl out. I'm still, I was still working on that up until yesterday. But I've been making slow progress, but it's sure, definite progress. So that is good. So I'm just going to show you the progress I've made. So here's here's my, this is my Huga shawl. It's a pattern by Kirsten Ballering. And the yarn um, is sheep gist. Um, it comes with 10 balls of the gray stone washed sheep gist. Um, yarn and it comes with 10 balls of the colored Katona and so you would the, the colorway of my kit is the jewel kit so I am almost finished with my bobble section and you can see all my beautiful bobbles oh I'm pulling my stitches out but that's okay um, some more yarn. I have to fix that. But I made this much progress. As you can see, this red stitch marker just indicates that this is the front of my pattern, right? Well this is the progress I had made I've made since my last episode. Okay? So I have this this moose that's kind of just hanging down right here. So from, from this moose up is what I've done since the last time I was on. So I'm making progress. I'm in... My, my bubbles are kind of stuck in. Sometimes you have to fiddle with them to get them to pop, but it's not a big deal. It's not... 
It's not popping more on the wrong side than it is on the front side. It's just some some of the, some of the bubbles are kind of bashful. So you kind of have to push them out with your thumb a little bit. But they, they, they you know, they're evident. They're on there, so that's fine. But they're pretty. And uh, I think I had, I think I have two more rows of bobbles to do before I can move on to the next step. So I am using my um, Clover Amour size 7 hook. And I think I'm doing pretty good on it. And it's pretty. I like the colors. I really do. And I think it's good progress. And I'm enjoying it, so that's that's a plus because I've been I've been having a hard time finding stuff that I'm enjoying working on. I guess it's a it's a um, I don't know, I've been kind of losing my crafting mojo lately, and I and I'll probably tell you why in a little bit. Because um, it's got something to do with my craft room. I got some news about my craft room. And you're going to get to see it today. So I'm pretty excited to show you about that. But that's going to be later on in the episode. If you're interested in seeing my craft. And you have to just stick with me to the very end. <laughs> I know that's a challenge. Most people don't stick with me to the very end. But that's okay. No judgment. <laughs> I know when I upload like an hour and a half, an hour and 45 minutes worth of content, it's hard to stick with it. I understand. But I don't want to do, I don't want to do a bunch of short episodes. I, I want to, you know, this is more like a blog, you know, so I, I don't want to do episodes several times a week or you know, I don't even want to do it this once a week. So that's that's why my shows are so long. Anyway, the next project that I've been working on is in my um, Geeky Girls Knit tote bag. I used to watch Geeky Girls Knit. Um, that was the very first knitting podcast that I watched regularly and I watched them for about four years three or four years and I really really liked them um, but her focus deviated sort of away from knitting and more into cross stitch and it seemed like she was more interested in the cross stitch than her knitting and I, I just I I kind of stepped away because it wasn't it wasn't about what I wanted it to be about and so and so I don't watch geeky girls knit anymore but I this is my sweater bag every time I make a sweater this is the bag I use because it's big enough to hold everything I want so November It is um, often uh, referred to as Nanny Swaymo Month, which is National Knit a Sweater Month, and it's it's derived from Nanny Nano Rimo, which is National Novel Writers Month, right? Yeah, Nano Rimo. National Novel Writing Month. Anywho, you're supposed to write a manuscript of 50,000 words or more during the course of November. Okay. Well, the knitting community developed Nano Swaymo in the same idea where you're supposed to knit a sweater of 50,000 stitches or more in the month of November. Well, 
I've been doing this for four years and I never once even thought that I would be able to accomplish knitting a sweater in an entire month. I, I just know it. I, that's just, I, I don't have that kind of time. But I believe in the spirit of the idea of having November as the, as my month to knit sweater. So you've seen that green one. Well, that's the one, that was the first sweater I made in, in support of Nanny Swingle. But I didn't finish it in November. I finished it later on in the year. And then last November, I started this sweater. Well, it's a short sleeve top. It's not really a sweater. But I had started it with a different yarn. And when I did my swatch, my swatch shrank considerably. About, I would say about four stitches in, in, in both direction, length and width. But I was like, oh, and I was on the thin side of the size that I wanted. So I'm like, well, that's fine. That gives me a little, you know, it'll snug up a little bit and so it won't be so big. Well, you know, I'm not sick as I was last November and I'm gaining weight back. Although I want to, I want to maintain, I want to maintain my weight. I don't want to, I don't want to really gain a whole lot more weight. But I was concerned that with the shrinkage of the swatch, that maybe I wasn't doing myself any favors by just carrying on with the top. And if I'd gone with any larger size, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have enough yarn to complete the entire project without having to add another color in or something like that. So what I did was I completely took out what I had and started over. And now I have, I have enough yarn to complete it either way. And I'm going to go with the original size because I decided I was going to make it in acrylic. And acrylic's not going to shrink. So, I'm sorry Boots. I put my I put my bag down on the chair and it's wood and it made a thump sound and it startled my cat. So the pattern I am making is called Janet Guthrie by Ann Hansen. And I'll show you the picture of it, but So I don't know if you can see that. I can hold that up like that. But that's that's Janet Guthrie. That's the name of the sweater. She oh. Did you see that? I didn't even see. I washed out my screen. I I have a viewfinder right here next to my camera so I can see what I'm doing and it when I held this up my background went dark. At any rate, um, I'll throw a picture of the sweater. But you you have a, a sleeveless option or a short sleeve option and I'm gonna go with the short sleeve option. Um, and And so, the main color I plan to use, I'm using all Knit Picks Brava Sport. Okay, so that's their 100% acrylic line and it's a sport weight. And this sweater calls for sport weight yarn. So, I have silver. This is going to be the main color. And then there's these lace... Uh, open works. It's not really. I guess it's kind of lace, but there's just a there's a little eyelet, eyelet, and these these skeins um, come in um, 273 yards, 
and I'll need 310 yards. Well, I'm not going to buy, actually, I want to use what I have. So, I thought, well, for those little eyelet stripes, I'll alternate with these two colors. So, this one is called Coral, and this one is called Caution. So, what I was going to do is I was going to alternate the eyelet rows. So I'll put this together and then this together all the way up. And then if you, if, if you noticed on the pattern photo, there's a, there's a, like a, uh, I guess a polo style neckline with a collar on it and I was going to do that in this color so that this color is against my face because I don't I don't know that this is good up against my face as good as this is so that's that's my plan that's what I'm going to do and so I'll have I'll have the base color gray and then these two alternating and I think it's going to turn out really, really nice. Um, so I, I, I cast on and knit the first two rows of it. So I really don't have very much to show. But I am using um, Knitter's Pride Zing. No, nope, these aren't Zing. These are Knitter's Pride Dreams. Dreams Symphony? Symphony Dreams. I don't know. But I'm right now I'm using US four and after I get done with the with the hem I switch to a US six. So So I think I got everything. Janet Guthrie by Ann Hansen. I'm using Nitpicks Brava Sport and Silver Coral and Caution. And then Knitter's Pride US4 and US6 needles. And I got my Geeky Girls knit bag. Okay. So I think that's, I covered, I think I covered all the gory details about it. But I, I'm really thrilled with this one. So I will be working on this, um, you know, I'll be probably working on this exclusively through November, so I'm excited to see how far I get. You know, like I said, I have no expectations of finishing it in November. I'm, I'm just, I'm too busy to be able to, to, to put that much time in one project. But, you know, it, it's always nice to see how far I get. Hopefully, my hope... But it's it's not a it's not a huge it's not a big deal if I don't meet it. But my hope would be to at least to have the back panel finished by the end of the month. I think that's a realistic um, goal to set for myself. So we'll see. I'm gonna zip it up so it doesn't fall out. <clears throat> That's it. Um, that's it for my projects right now that I'm actively working on. Um, I did go through my projects, my all my whips that I have laying around because I cleaned my craft room. And um, I still want them. I still want to work them all. So, you know, I didn't, I didn't send any of them to the frog pond. So that was it for what I'm currently working on. So let's move on to the next segment. And now it's time for Mama's Pattern Showcase. And this is the part of the show where I look at the Ravelry Top 20 for crochet and the Ravelry Top 20 for knit. 
So if there is an alternate source means to obtain the pattern, then I, I showcase it here. So I alternate between three crochet and two knit, and then the next week I do three knit and two crochet. So this time, last time I did two crochet and three knit, so this time I will do three crochet and two knit. So the first pattern that I would like to showcase today is called the 2021 Un Unity Cow. Um, it's a crochet along by several crochet designers. Let me list them all here. I have Kirsten Bishop, Andrea Harding, Mel, ha Mel Harrison, Tegan House, Melissa Hughes, Fiona Langtree, Carissa McPherson, Colleen O'Neill, Melody Talon, Emma Wilkinson, and that's it. Okay, so this pattern is number two on the Crochet Top 20. It is a free crochet along in the Facebook group that I have linked in my show notes. Um, so, here it is. Let me tell you, it's going to be a blanket throw. Um, and it's going to be available in multiple sizes using cro uh, using U.S. crochet terminology. Um, this pattern is going to be available in English and in Polish. And here's here's the details, okay? So ten Australian designers have unified together to create one beautiful blanket. It is sponsored by the Australian crochet community and Kokonki. Uh, Kokonki Maki Ombre, which I don't know what that is. Um, project information will be released on the 1st of December 2020, allowing for overseas postage of yarn. The Part 1 file will be released on Valentine's Day, uh, 14 February 2021. So what they're doing is they're trying to generate interest on their Facebook group to start this free crochet along to make a blanket um, in support of these 10 Australian crochet designers. So, um, if you would be interested in participating in this crochet along with the Australians, then you will want to check out their Facebook group because um, it looks like that is going to be the main location where they post this crochet along. So, um, so you'll find the link to it when in my in my show notes where it says 2021 Unity Cal. That link will take you straight to the Facebook group. So, if that sounds like something you're interested in, check that out. It's a free crochet along. And it might help you get acquainted with our crochet friends from down under. So check that out if you get a chance. The next pattern I would like to showcase today is called the Back Country Beanie by Ashley Edmonds. It is three dollars and ninety-seven cents on Ravelry. Or you can get it free on the website called Through the Loop Yarn Craft. Through the Loop Yarn Craft. Okay. This pattern is number four on the Crochet Top 20. And it's a beautiful beanie cap. It's, it's got um, crochet cabling, uh, the cables look. Um, it's a hat with a... Uh, it's a beanie, beanie hat using bulky weight yarn um, and a hook size 9mm which is an MN hook 
And it's available in sizes toddler, child, adult, and large adult. It uses U.S. crochet terminology. And it's a Canadian pattern, so that's why that's why the 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 cost of it was three dollars and ninety seven cents. It's it's listed five dollars Canadian. Um, I think that's Canadian. C A D. Well, I don't rightly know. I don't know. So let's see. <clears throat> the back the back country beanie is a perfect hat for gift giving. The pattern works up quick and is gender neutral. This pattern is all of my, this pattern, as all of my patterns, has been thoroughly tested by testers of different skill level. Due to the nature of the PDF files, I will not refund any patterns. However, I am always available via email or a message here on Ravelry if you have any questions about the patterns. For sales, giveaway, and info on new pattern releases, sign up for my e email newsletter at Through the Loop. And you can... S okay, so that's just her copyright statement. But, um, but you can actually buy her pattern on her website, I think. No, it was a it was a free pattern if you get it on her website, or you pay three dollars and ninety seven cents if you buy it on Ravelry, because Ravelry is an ad free version, so she wants you to pay for it, but. She's got ads all over her website, so if you, I guess if you click on her ads, that makes the pattern free for you. So, so but it's a beautiful hat. I think it's very, very lovely. Nice and rustic looking, and it's, it's you know, it, it is. It sounds like a really nice gift. The third pattern that I would like to showcase to you is called the the. Thea by Zoya. I have to bear with me on this last name. Her first name is Zoya, Z O Y A, and her last name is Mat Yushenko. Mat Yushenko, M A T Y U S H E N K O. Mat Yushenko. All right, what this is is a decorative doily and I tell you what it's one of the prettiest doilies I have seen in a while um, it is currently um, number five in the crochet top 20 so it's up there now the pattern is available for seven dollars and thirty-two cents on Ravelry, but if you buy it from her Etsy shop, you get thirty percent off. So it's only five dollars and twelve cents if you buy it from her Etsy shop. So that's a really good deal to get it for thirty percent off, because um, it's six dollars euro. This doily. It's crocheted using using thread. It's a, it's a thread. So it uses a 1.5 millimeter crochet hook. Um, and it's, the pattern is written in U.S. crochet terminology. And it's available in English and Russian. The pattern is written instruction with drawn with drawn chart to each round. So she said your tension will determine things like hook size, yardage, finish sides, and the height of stitches. Um, using recommended thread and hook, this pattern will use approximately 600 to 700 yards of thread. And your finished doily will be about 16 and a half inches in diameter from point to point. The pattern consists of 47 rounds. 
Crochet skill level is advanced. You will need to work front and back post stitches, clusters, two stitches together, popcorns and baubles. All abbreviations, special stitches and techniques are explained in detail. That is good to know. She has a uh, discussion and support group on Facebook. It's called Crochet Designs by Zoya Matyushenko. Support and discussion group. And she's got an Etsy shop. So I highly uh, recommend you take a look at it. If, if anything else, to admire the intricacy of this beautiful design. And she used a um, gradient thread, so it starts out pink and goes off to a cream and then graduates to a, a taupe and then a brown. It's, it's, ugh, it's gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. Very pretty. Uh, so... Yeah, if you if you like to crochet doilies, I've never I've never crocheted one, and I've never crocheted anything using thread. But my goodness, I I this this almost makes me want to make something like this because it's just breathtakingly beautiful. So check out Thea by Zoya Matyushenko. If you're interested, it's, it's so pretty. It's, it's worth just looking at, you know. Even if you don't want to crochet one, it's just it's absolutely a work of art. Very very nice. So let's move on to the knitting patterns that I'd like to showcase. The first knit pattern I would like to tell you about is called Bristle Comb by Amber Platzer. Corcoran. Um, you can find this pattern on Fancy Tiger Crafts and it's free. Uh, this pattern is knit using DK weight um, using a US 4 and a US 6 needle. Um, the hat is available in six sizes. Um, newborn, um, six month, toddler, teen, adult, and la large adult sizes. Uh, with a range of six sizes from newborn to large adult, this cozy pattern makes the perfect hat for all your loved ones. The bristle cone features a hemmed ribbed brim which keeps ears warm on the chilliest of days. A slip stitch cable pattern adds simple texture and makes for an engaging knit. Top your hat with a fluffy alpaca pom-pom for added style. And who doesn't want added style? I guess guys don't want added style. Girls, girls like pom-poms, boys don't want a pom-pom. <laughs> well, I guess maybe some boys like pom-poms. Whoever likes pom-pom can like a pom-pom. But it's also a very beautiful hat. It's got a ribbing hem and then it's got sort of like a, a cable-y looking crown on it. And this is very beautiful. And it is free on her website. And her website is called Fancy Tiger Crafts. So that is very, very neat. And then finally... I mean, I didn't even tell you what number that was on the Knitting Top 20. It was number 8 on the Knitting Top 20. I had to go all the way to 8 to find one that wasn't available on Ravelry. You know, it's, I've, I've learned that when you, you want to find a pattern that's, you know, on Ravelry, but you want to obtain it through a different source, crochet designers are a lot more um, they offer their patterns across a broader spectrum of sources and knitters are very 
knitting designers are very exclusive to Ravelry. Um, that's not to say some some crochet designers aren't, but when I when I'm looking for patterns that are available by other sort from other sources, I have to go way down in there before I find one that's available away from Ravelry. So um, so I had to go to number eight, but I'm glad I did because that bristle cone hat is adorable but yeah that was number eight and then the next one the uh, knit pattern I would like to showcase I don't know how to pronounce it uh, <clears throat> it's called a bakal bakalalu and it's kind of like a balakalava you know it's it's like a a four-headed Thing, but it's made for babies and it's so adorable and it, it ooh, a flying insect get out of here I don't know what you are get out it was a flying insect that landed on the table I don't like bugs I don't um I lost my train up so so it's made for a baby, and so it's got an open face, an open face, but it goes down around and around the neck. So it's like a, a cowl and a hat all in one, and it's so cute. And the little baby in the picture <laughs> just knocks my socks off. He's just so adorable. It could be a girl. It could be a boy. It's hard to tell on babies if they're boys or girls, but... Oh. Such a cute little baby. And it's so adorable. But it is, um, let me tell you about it. It's a knitted hat, balaclava, um, using fingering weight and a US 6 and a US 4 needle. It's available in one, two, three. So I am having a hard time. Three to six months, six to twelve months, one to two years, two to three years, and four to five years. So they're for little little kids and little babies. So they don't have they they don't make they don't design this for big people. But I don't see big people wearing this, but it's so cute for a child. Um, let me see what the narrative says. Um, <clears throat> this is a great project for leftovers. You can use any fingering weight yarn with a recommended gauge of approximately 27 stitches to 10 centimeters. It looks nice to use two slightly different colored yarns so that you create a marled fabric. And maybe you want to use different colors for the ribbing and the garter stitch. Or every other garter stitch ridge in a contrasting color. So what she wants to do is she wants to use two strands of fingering together in, at, uh, in the stitch. So it is definitely adorable and you can get it from her website. It's available through Ravelry for $4.45, um, but it's a, it's a Norwegian pattern. Um, and the pattern's available in English and Norwegian. So you have to go to the Norwegian website to get the pattern from there. Um, but it is number 14 on the Knitting Top 20. And it's just adorable. If you have a little one, little bitty kid, I, that would just... <laughs> my, my heart's melting. <laughs> it's so cute. So, so there we are. So in review, um, for Mama's Pattern Showcase, we have the 2021 Unity Cow um, by 10 Australian crochet designers. You have Backcountry Beanie.
by Ashley Edmonds, and you have Thea uh, by Zoya Matyushenko. And then your two knit patterns that I showcased was Bristlecone by Amber Platzer Corcoran and the Bacalu Bacalolu by Tina Hogland. And her website, I didn't even tell you what her website was. It's called Strickzilla. S-T-R-I-K-K-E-Z-I-L-L-A design. And, um, yeah, so it's $4.45 in Ravelry. I'm, I'm not altogether certain if it's free free on her website or if you have to pay. I had a hard time determining that. So if it's not if it's not available for purchase on her website, I'm sorry. But it there was a link to her website and I saw it on there. I just couldn't find where the pattern was. And maybe you still have to buy it through her website. But that covers it for Mama's Pattern Showcase. So let's move on to the next segment. And now it's time for Mama Cooks. And I've cooked quite a few things since my last episode. Um, since I only do my podcast twice a month, um, the last time I did my podcast there was three Wednesdays before, or three, three times before the first Thursday of the month. So, I've been cooking stuff. Um, so, the most, well, further back, uh, a couple weeks ago, um, my husband and I went to a friend's house for their, uh, for a, uh, a hayride and a bonfire. And I said, hey, I'll bring a pot of chili, and she was like, great, that'd be great, and they had hot dogs, so we had chili dogs, and um, there was cheese dip, and, you know, all kinds of different foods, everybody brought something to share, you know. So I made my tried and true uh, chili recipe, um, I don't, you know, this is my recipe. I didn't get it from anybody else. It's actually it's my mom's recipe, but it's the recipe that I've used because that's what I grew up on, and it's awesome. I it's it's flavorful. It's not overly spicy. I don't like anything that's so spicy you can't enjoy it. So um, it's not overly spicy. Um, the leftovers taste amazing the next day and up to a couple of days afterwards, although it's hard, it's hard to get my chili to stick around because you know, once I make a pot of chili, people just keep dipping into it and dipping into it. It's really good with Fritos. It's good with cheese. It's good if you slap a dollop of sour cream on it. Um, you know, you can put raw onions on it and stuff. I always serve my chili with cornbread. So you'll get to hear about the cornbread recipe in, in the Mama Bakes segment. But um, my chili is very simple. It's very easy. And it doesn't have anything unusual in it. So everything that goes into my chili, you can buy it at the store today if you wanted to. Um, and, you know, I, I could keep this a secret, a deep family secret, but you know what? The best recipes are meant to be shared. So if, if you don't have a favorite chili recipe and you, you know, want to try mine, then I highly encourage you to give it a try. It's very simple to make and it's really filling. And if you wanted to, you could cut the recipe in half. I always, I always make... I always make a big part of it. So for for one of those large Dutch ovens, and it's not a huge stock pot. It's just the standard size Dutch oven that you would get with a, you know, a multi-piece 
parts in the pan set usually come from the Dutch oven that size you know I think the one I have is like six quarts and it doesn't feel that I think it's I think I, I think this makes about four quarts of chili I think so yeah I highly recommend you give my chili a try so if you stick around I'll show you how to make it right now for chili, you will need three pounds ground beef, one large onion chopped, half a tablespoon garlic minced, two teaspoons salt, half teaspoon pepper, 28 ounce can crushed tomatoes, two regular size cans Rotel Original, two regular size cans chili beans in mild sauce, two regular cans kidney beans, three tablespoons chili powder. In a Dutch oven, brown the ground beef with onion and garlic. Drain off fat. Return to pot and add salt, pepper, tomatoes, Rotel and all the beans. Bring to a boil, reduce heat, cover and simmer for one hour or until beans are soft as you like. Add chili powder and simmer for 15 minutes longer. And that's all there is to it. Um, you can make your cornbread to go with it you can serve it with cheese and Fritos and crackers and sour cream and fresh onion or whatever else you like to put on your chili. Enjoy! The next thing that I made was um, every Thursday for the month of October I've been making soups. So the other soup I made, um, chili, we did the chili one night because I made the chili the night before and then took it to the cookout the next day. Um, so the, the, the other soup that I made for Thursday soup night was chicken and dumpling soup. And it was delicious. And it was very, very hearty. And it was very, very good. The only thing that I didn't... Well... It was good. But I found that the noodles really absorbed a lot of the broth. And it did call for a quarter cup of rice in addition to the noodles. And I think the rice absorbed an awful lot of the broth too. So in the end it turned out being more of a, I would say it was more of a, of a stew. You know, when it came right down to it. But uh, my daughter and I, we really liked the dumplings on top. They came out wonderfully and it, I, it used um, thyme as the seasoning as an herb in the dumplings and I don't know about you but I really love thyme in my chicken I love all kinds of herbs I like I like rosemary in chicken I like thyme in chicken um, but um, this one just called for thyme in, in the dumplings, but, um, and, and I, I made this completely from scratch. It called for a whole chicken that you boil ahead, you know, boil for an hour or and a half and, um, you know, I boil the chicken and then I pull the skin off of it and cut the meat off the bone. Oh, it didn't need to be cut and you just had to wiggle those bones around and all the meat just fell right off of them so um, <clears throat> it was a really really satisfying um, soup 
And we, we ate on it, Audrey and I ate on it for several days after cooking it. But the, long, the longer it stuck around, the more it absorbed the liquid. So it wasn't as fun to eat, um, you know, as time progressed. But it was fine. It was, it was good. It was really hearty soup. And if you're going to feed a crowd, because it made 20 servings, so it's nice big pot soup. Um, but it was good. It was really good. So, so I highly recommend you give the chicken and dumpling soup a try. There's a lot of ingredients in it, but it was all fairly common stuff. Um, I had no trouble finding, you know, what to put in there. Um, it called for fresh parsley, but I mentioned before that I always use the parsley flakes. So I use half of what they call for because they always say that the dry herbs are stronger than the fresh ones. So in, in the recipe it calls for two tablespoons of fresh parsley and I used one tablespoon of, you know, freeze dried parsley. But yeah, I think that was the only thing I did different. So it was a lot of fun. So this is how I made chicken and dumpling soup. For chicken and dumpling soup, you will need one broiler fryer chicken, about three to three and a half pounds, three quarts water, one quarter cup chicken bouillon granules, one bay leaf, one teaspoon whole peppercorns, one eighth teaspoon ground allspice, six cups uncooked wide noodles, four cups sliced carrots, three quarter cup sliced celery, one third cup chopped onion, one package 10 ounces frozen mixed vegetables, one quarter cup uncooked long grain rice, two tablespoons minced fresh parsley or one tablespoon dried parsley. For the dumplings, you will need one and a third cups of all-purpose flour, two teaspoons baking powder, one teaspoon dried thyme, half teaspoon salt, two-thirds cup milk, two tablespoons vegetable oil. In a du Dutch oven or large soup kettle, combine the first six ingredients. Bring to a boil. Reduce heat, cover, and simmer for one and a half hours. Remove chicken, allow to cool, strain broth, <clears throat> discard bay leaf and peppercorns. Skim the fat from the broth. Debone the chicken and cut the meat into chunks. Return the chicken and the broth to the pot. Add noodles, vegetables, rice, and parsley and bring to a simmer. For the dumplings, combine flour, baking powder, thyme, and salt in a bowl. Combine the milk and the oil and stir into the dry ingredients. Drop by teaspoons full onto the simmering soup. Reduce the heat, cover and simmer for 15 minutes. Do not lift the lid on the pot. And then it's ready to serve. So it makes 20 servings. I hope you enjoy the chicken and dumpling soup. And now it's time for Mama Bakes. And I ba baked two things since the last time. When I made that chili, I made cornbread. But I didn't use the cornbread recipe that I typically use. This time, um, a friend uh, I have 
um, posted a recipe on Facebook and um, <clears throat> so we all thought that we would give it a try. So I, I tried it and in order to have the recipe handy I just took a screenshot on my phone of the recipe well it cut off the name of the recipe so I'm calling it Facebook cake mix cornbread because I don't know what the official name of it is all I had was the recipe it chopped off the title of the recipe because it was more important for me to have the recipe than the title and I, I, it didn't occur to me that I would maybe try to put it on my show, but I did, so, it, you know, it don't matter. But it uses a cake mix, and then two of those Jiffy Corn Muffin mixes, and then various other ingredients. But we liked it. It tasted good, but it was more of a texture of cake than the cornbread that we're used to. Scott and I talked about it and we thought that would be a good cornbread for children. It's a children's cornbread because it is more, it's more got the texture of cake and it's sweet, you know. Not that I, not that I just like sweet cornbread, I do like sweet cornbread, but this one, I mean, you have a whole yellow cake mix in the entire thing. So, you know, I think if you're going to make a pot of chili and there's going to be a lot of children there, make this, make this cornbread because it'll go, the children, the children will enjoy it. It'll be the best cornbread they ever ate. But if you're an adult and you like real honesty goodness cornbread, then I recommend you just use your use whatever recipe you like but uh, and I do have I do have a traditional cornbread recipe that I like to use so maybe I'll share that with you in a future episode but here's how I made Facebook cake mix cornbread for Facebook cake mix cornbread you will need one yellow cake mix one cup water, half cup vegetable oil, two Jiffy corn muffin mixes, two thirds cup milk, five eggs. Preheat your oven to 350 degrees. Grease a 13 by nine inch pan. Mix all ingredients by hand just until combined. Pour a mixture into pan. Bake for 35 to 40 minutes until the top is golden brown and a toothpick comes out clean. This cornbread serves 12 to 16. Enjoy! The final recipe that I would like to share with you is my banana bread recipe. This is just my banana recipe. Uh, I, I think I found it in one of those down home um, fundraiser cookbooks years and years ago. Um, but it's something I always kept a handle on. And it's just basic. It's not fancy in, by any means. It's just a basic banana bread recipe. Um, I did add vanilla and maple flavoring to it this time, but I don't typically. The, the recipe I'm showing you, or the, the recipe I'm going to give you, is exactly the way I make it. Um, but if you want to add vanilla, you can add vanilla. Um, if you want to add maple flavoring, you can add maple or whatever flavoring you want. You, or you know you can do it like I do and not put any in there but uh, it's just a basic banana bread you can add your own nuts uh, you can use walnuts or pecans or whatever nut you like um, Scott prefers banana nut bread but Audrey is not a fan of nuts and I don't care either way so 
This time I made it without nuts, but it tastes every bit as good with nuts in it. So if you want to add add your walnuts or your pecans, whatever you like to have. But this is how I made banana bread. For banana bread, you will need three overripe bananas, one cup sugar, two cups flour, one teaspoon baking powder, one teaspoon baking soda, one teaspoon salt, two eggs, one half cup shortening. Preheat oven to 325 degrees. Grease and flour a 9 by 5 loaf pan. Mash bananas in mixer until smooth. Mix in sugar. Let stand for 15 minutes. In a small bowl, combine flour, baking powder, soda, and salt. Add eggs and shortening to the banana mixture and then add the flour mixture. Beat well. Pour into the loaf pan and bake for 50 to 60 minutes. Test with a pick to make sure it's done. I hope you enjoy this recipe for banana bread. And now it's time for Mama Reads. And boy, I finished a bunch of books this time and I'm very happy about that. I finished, um, finished Fatal Distractions, Conquering Destructive Temptations by Kay Arthur. That was very good. I enjoyed that. Uh, we finished that up and, and, and now it's all over with. So, so that was a good study if you want a, a little short study. Uh, book that's that's a fairly decent one. The other book that I finished was Hadley Beckett's Next Dish by Bethany Turner. Um, we read this for um, my friend, my friend Elizabeth. Um, wanted to start a book club. And the publisher was offering a book club party kit um, to encourage readers um, to read this book for, th for their book clubs. Well, she thought that was a really good opportunity to start a book club. So we read the book and then um, we got together and we had a little bit of a, a social time and it was wonderful it was wonderful for me because I got to m meet people I didn't know um, the only person I knew um, was the hostess Elizabeth and um, and she had invited um, various friends in the community so I got to meet a few women that I I didn't know previously, so that was that was nice. I um, you know, I, I I love the friends I have, but it's fun to meet make new friends or new acquaintances. So, um, she wasn't sure on the frequency how often she wanted to get together, and and I said, well, I, I you know either you know either once a quarter or once every other month. Um, she and I both agreed that probably once a month was too much, um, so, so, but she hasn't decided yet, she's, there's, she's, there's been a lot of stuff going on in her life right now, so, so she doesn't have time to concentrate on the book club, but she's, she's got, getting ideas, and she chit-chats with me about it on knit night, because she's my knit night buddy, so, so that was a good book, I really enjoyed that. The other book I finished, and you didn't even know I was reading it because I read it, I read it all the way through, you know, in the last couple of weeks, 
was the third book in the Knit and Nibble mystery series. This one is called Knit One, Die Two by Peggy Earhart. And it was good. I like this one. I like this one better than the first two. So, um, these books, if you start out and you're thinking, I don't know if I really like the first one. And then you think, oh, well, the thick one's better, but I don't know if I want to keep on with it. Well, this one was good. This one, this one was good. It was worth, it was worth reading. And, um, uh, I don't know if I'm going to carry on. I only had these three books. Um, but I enjoyed that. I enjoyed that very much. And there's a peach cobbler recipe in here that I'm going to make for Thanksgiving. I'm going to make three desserts I'm making. I can't, I can't do, I have to make, I have to make pumpkin pie. And I have to make a chocolate cream pie. And usually I'll make an apple pie. But this year, I think we're going to make the peach cobbler instead of the apple pie. So, I think that will be delicious. I'm going to make her recipe. I, I usually make the, the recipe on the biscuit box. You know, the peach cobbler recipe from Bisquick. And it's good. I like it. You know, it's the recipe my family's used for as long as I can remember. Um, but... I'm going to try this recipe out and see if it's any good for Thanksgiving. So that's pretty exciting. But those are the three books that I have finished. What I'm currently reading is I'm still, I'm still working on Biscuits, Butter, and Blessings, Farm Fresh Devotions of Hope and Comfort by Linda Kozar. I'm almost done. I'm on page 148. So out of 206, 208, so I'm nearly done with it. I, um, I hadn't been going downstairs to knit or craft or anything for a while because I wasn't enjoying going down there because my room was so cluttered with a bunch of mess and I didn't want to go down there. Well, now that I've got it all cleaned out down there, I'm going back down there, and when I go down there, the first thing I do before I start crafting or doing anything else is I, I read one one little devotion out of here. So, you know, I haven't been consistent with it, because I, and I do, I have a bit Bible, Bible reading plan that I do, you know, so I get Bible in every day, but, um. But, you know, this is just a little added, little nugget of wisdom before I start crafting something. So I'm still working on that one. Um, my Women on Wednesdays, um, we meet on the second and fourth Wednesday of every month. So we had our, we started a new study. And this one is called Advent, The Weary World Rejoices by Lifeway Women. And, um, and you, you guys are probably thinking, okay, it's November. Why, why are you doing an Advent study in November? Well, because we only meet twice a month. And I wanted a five-session study to get us through the end of the year. And this this is it. This is the five session study. So uh, we were working on the lesson on hope. It's five lessons. So um, um, it goes um, on. We spend Spend a session on hope, peace, joy, love, and then we have a wrap-up session. And there are crafts that you can do for each each segment. 
And it's designed for you to meet once a week. Well, my group doesn't meet once a week. We meet twice a month. So, um, so I think it's fine. And it gives us, you know, sometimes when you, when you get one of these Bible studies and you have to have five lessons a week, that's, that's too much. People are busy. So if we spread it out, you know, to meet every couple of weeks, you have a greater chance of actually completing the work and, and ready to discuss it. So that's why we do it the way we do. And, uh, and we don't always do craft. The idea, though, is to try something different and to get us in the mood for Christmas early. And I think that'll be helpful because, um, well, just think of the name of this title. The weary world rejoices. And who's not weary after 2020? 2020 has been a very challenging year for a lot of people. And um, this was last year's Christmas study. They have a new one out. Um, um, but I went, I went to the last year's one because this was available and the new one wasn't out yet, so I went with this one. But, but I think I think the subtitle of this Advent study is uh, timely. You know, the weary world rejoices, and you know the fact that Jesus came, our Savior was born. I think it's I think. Any time is the right time to think about our Savior entering the world, but to get our minds in the mood after having such a traumatic year, I think I think this will do our do us some good for our for our family, you know, for for our families, those of us who are doing this together. I think it'll help us get in the mood. So. I find that to be beneficial. And then finally on my Kindle, I am reading um, The Hope of Azure Springs by Rachel Fordham. And I'm doing a read-along in her Facebook group. She's, she's doing a read-along that her first novel was The Hope of Azure Springs. And so Rachel Fordham... Uh, <clears throat> readers uh, it's called the page turners a facebook group they're doing the read along for her first novel and so i decided to join along and so i'm i finished six let me see six chapters six chapters and i'm starting chapter six tomorrow so so i'm six chapters in Five chapters in. I got five chapters completed. And I'm enjoying that book. It's a very nice, very nice book so far. Um, I like the lead character. She's she's been she's lived a rough life. And um, for seven years she's kinda lived a very primitive life. And you would think that she would be um, timid and skittish and all of that but she's not she's um, the impression I get of the main character is you know things are what they are and she doesn't seem to have life life hasn't done her in if you know I think that's the best way to describe her she just she doesn't come off as someone who's defeated at all. So I like that about her. She's got she's got grit and she's got um, a backbone. And that's so far that's what I like about her. So the hope of Azure Springs. Well that's all I'm reading right now. Just those three. And plus I'm doing a little uh, a Bible segment every day. Well, that's good.
And in the last few weeks, I've watched a ton of movie movies. Um, <clears throat> not a ton. I watched, but I watched several. I think I watched about ten. Looks like about ten right here. But I watched Honeymoon for One from 2011 with Nicolette Sheridan and Patrick Bellotti. Um, that one was cute. It was a cute Hallmark movie. Um, she was going to get married and then uh, she, he was cheating on her so she went on her honeymoon without him. <laughs> and then met a fella, of course. Then we watched The Tall Man from 2012 with Jessica Biel and Jodell Fairland. And I thought that was a really thought-provoking movie. It was a little bit eerie. You know, all these children were disappearing. And there was a reason why. And it was kind of like a moral, one of those moral dilemma movies. It was pretty interesting. I watched Country at Heart uh, from 2020 with Jesse Schramm and Nail Matter. And it was a um, musical a girl trying to make it in Nashville and there's this one guy trying to write a song and they get together and it was cute. It was a cute movie. And then there I watched um, Sweet Home Carolina from 2017 with Heather McComb and Paul Green. Now Paul Green is on the When Calls the Heart series. He's the, he's the doctor in Hope Valley. But um I didn't think this couple, I don't think this, this, this couple wasn't good for each other. I don't know. I just, I don't know if I liked the story. I didn't know if, I don't think I liked it that much. Um, I watched Sweet Autumn from 2020 with Nikki Jalosh and Andrew W. Walker. I thought that one was cute. I thought that was a good movie. And then we watched The Haunted Mansion from 2003 with Eddie Murphy and Marcia uh, Thomason. And we enjoyed that. I've seen that before, but it was fun to watch that again. Um, I don't like stuff that's spooky, so ha The Haunted Mansion was fine. Um, we watched The Great Pumpkin Charlie Brown also, but that I don't consider that a movie. That was a TV show. Um, uh, but on, on Halloween night, we also watched The House with a Clock in Its Walls from 2018. It had Jack Black and Kate Blanchett in it. And that was that was a pretty good movie. Um, I don't like magic if it's too creepy. And this was almost on the creepy side, but I don't know. I, I have mixed feelings when it comes to magic. I... I'm a Christian, so, you know, mediums and stuff like that don't really sit right with me. But it's prolific. It's prolific in all the movies. So you have to, you know, sometimes you, you watch stuff with magic in it and, you know, you don't think anything of it. But I do. It, it makes me uncomfortable. But I still, I still watch it, you know. No, I, I don't want to be a complete footy daddy, so I'll watch stuff with magic in it once in a while. But it was a pretty engaging t uh, movie, I thought. And then we watched The Truman Show from 1998 with Jim Carrey and Ed Harris. That was a good movie. I hadn't seen it in a long, long time, but I enjoyed it. <clears throat> and then finally, just the other night, we watched um, Dark Places from 2015 with Charlie Theron and Nicholas Holt and um, that was a good movie. I I read half the book. I had borrowed it on Kindle from the library but I didn't finish it before the library took it away from me. So I watched the movie and and that was kind of wow. That was an interesting story. It, it had you guessing. You didn't know how it was going to end. Now, now I want to go back and read the book. But it was an interesting story. I, I, I kind of liked it. Um, 
But that's it for, for a movie, Mama. I, I, I watched plenty of movies, you know, wasted, wasted many hours <laughs> in front of the TV. But in a good way, it was all good stuff. So, so that's it for Movie Mama. Let's move on to the next segment. <sighs> so now it's time for Miscellaneous Mama. And I guess I've just reviewed the past couple of weeks. A couple of weeks ago, Scott and I um, got some professional photographs done so that was pretty fun and Audrey and I my daughter um, did a um, craft room overhaul and it took all weekend to do that so uh, we cleared out the room Friday night and then Saturday I spent um, fixing it up and then Sunday I finished fixing it up and my daughter who has a YouTube channel. Her YouTube channel is called Audrey Grace. And she does cleaning motivation videos. And so she used um, cleaning my craft room as content for her channel. And so Audrey was all excited because she said, we're doing a collab. And I'm like, yes, we're doing a collab. And so if you want to check out um, what we did to clean, you know, if you want to see a before and then how we all cleaned it all out and how we restored it back to order, um, you're welcome to check out her video. As a matter of fact, if you subscribe to her channel, you can watch her clean my filthy house. <laughs> that makes me laugh. I, 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 Cleaning does not motivate me at all, and I really don't enjoy doing it. It's something that I do because we have to, you know, but I, I'm not really gung-ho about it, and she is. So if you want to check out my filthy house and see how clean she keeps it, <laughs> then go ahead and watch some of her videos. You can see my dirty house. <laughs> but that was a lot of fun, and um, it was something that needed to be done because... It was out of control, and and I ain't buying no more yarn. Knock on knock on my wooden chair. <laughs> I I've always known I had plenty of yarn. It's just now it's all visible and I can see it better. I had it all divided up on either side of the wall. Now I have one whole wall dedicated to the yarn, and I feel much better about that. We had our first snowfall on October 26th. It snowed and snowed and snowed and it was slick. But the nice thing about Missouri is when it snows, it's only around for a day or two and then it, it melts and, and it's not bad. So I like, I like Missouri because we get plenty of cold and we get plenty of snow, but I'm thankful because it doesn't last long. <laughs> But that was fun. That was unusual for it to snow this early in the year. Um, Halloween was a non-issue for our family. You know, all the kids are grown. Um, we we wanted trick or treaters, but not a single trick or treater came by the house. And you know, our our town allowed for it. And I saw kids out there wandering around, but they didn't come to our door. So. And that's fine. I'm not going to go chasing down kids, throwing candy at them. It's not a parade. If they want candy, they have to come to my door. I'm not going to go chase them around with candy. But um, but that's it. That's all that's going on. Um, my next episode is going to be November 19th. So let's move on to the next segment. I want to thank you for spending time with me. I know that watching my program is a choice and I'm grateful that you have given me a slice of your valuable time. If you enjoyed what you saw today, I encourage you to click subscribe so you can find me more easily next time. 
Episodes are posted on the first and third Thursday of every month, but if you click on the notification bell, you will get a notice whenever a new episode goes public. If you want to ask me any questions, you can comment down below or you can send me an email at midmomama2 at gmail.com. I can be found on Instagram at midmomama1. I made my account private to cut down on spammy type followers, but if you follow me and you have stuff like yarn and food and stuff on your feed, then I will follow you also. On Ravelry, I am Midmo Mama. On Stitched Zone, I am Midmo Mama. And I opened an account on Parlor. So if you want to find me on Parlor, I am Midmo Mama there. So until next time, I wish that God bless you. Bye.